empty tables and little of the usual hustle and bustle. After two years of booming activity, this tourist hotspot in Diyarbakir in southeast Turkey has fallen quiet. After the resumption of fighting between the authorities and the rebel Kurdistan Workers' Party, or the PKK, the local economy is once again flagging. As you can see, this year the streets are deserted and business has dropped 70 to 80 percent. Over 40,000 people have been killed since the PKK took up arms in 1984, demanding an independent Kurdish state. But a ceasefire signed in 2013 had seen two years of relative calm that allowed the economy in the southeast to catch up with the rest of the country. For two years it worked well. There were no more deaths. There were no problems, either security-wise or with the economy. Tourists started to come to Diyarbakir. But now, at this time, it's dead. The PKK abandoned the truce in July, accusing Turkish authorities of collaborating with Islamic State fighters in Syria, an allegation Ankara vehemently denies. Kurdish fighters have since staged almost daily attacks against the security forces, killing more than 150 police and soldiers. And the government claims to have killed more than 1,700 militants in a relentless bombing campaign. In an area where there's no law, where institutions are rocked by instability, it's normal for there to be economic problems. Investment is uncertain, no one wants to buy materials, buildings or a home, which obviously stalls business. For this law professor, it's obvious how the situation came about. During the peace process, the government focused on the influence that the PKK could have in the region. After elections on the 7th of June, the PKK took up arms and the state wanted to regain control, so it overreacted to the violence. Current polls in the region suggest the pro-Kurdish HDP party will maintain its majority in snap elections on November 1st. The PKK has vowed to suspend all offensive action in the lead-up to the vote, though clashes have continued in recent days.